So we're going to take our input and put it in the attributes, just like you would in normal HTML for an input. And we'll say, when you type in Fahrenheit, we want to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. And on input automatically calls a function with the string that you typed. So if you're thinking in JavaScript, for example, and you have a function called on input, it's going to get whatever you type in that string field, right? And it's going to say, here, here's what you typed. And then you can do whatever you want with this string. You can ignore the return value. Elm is very similar. When you type in a field for that event, it's going to dispatch it and say, yo, I uh, am in an input field just letting you know that somebody typed in me. And we're like, cool. Can you, whenever somebody types in you, Fahrenheit, can you please dispatch this message and include the string they typed? And they'll go, that's great. I can do that. So we'll copy pasta coding and do the same thing for the Celsius. Celsius to Fahrenheit. That word is so stupid. Compile. And we'll type 32 and we'll type 24. And we should see about two to four events here. And you can see over time I type three, then two, 32, right? And you can see the, the message that was called with. And then when I typed 24, it was two first, then four. And it called the Celsius to Fahrenheit because I typed in the other field. And if you want to see the logs, you can actually see the price over time. But I like the debug because it allows you to kind of rewind and see what happened over time, right, as, you, as it went through. And so you can time travel debugging, so to speak. All right, so that's our app with inputs wired up. And we log the message, but we don't actually do anything. We need to do two things with that message and parse it out. So let's play with logs first before you commit to actually wire anything up, just because it allows you to play with your algorithms, play with the parsing, and kind of see how things work out.